Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here. I am out here in the park today to share something with you guys that's extremely important when you're looking into cameras, when you're using cameras that a lot of people might not understand, and that is dynamic range. Now, you may see cameras coming out all the time um, with higher and higher dynamic ranges. Uh, you know, they just came out with the C300 Mark II from Canon, 14 stops at dynamic range. Um, Black Magic Ursa Mini promises you know, 15 stops of dynamic range with their new 4.6K sensor. Um, but if you don't understand what dynamic range is, then this really doesn't help you in deciding what camera to use. So what dynamic range is, uh, in its simplest form, is the range of light that a camera can see. How far into the highlights can it see and how far into the shadows or the, or the blacks can it see. And it's how far can it see and, and retain detail. Um, so basically, as cameras get better and better, they're all moving towards the ideal, which is trying to recreate human vision. The human eye is absolutely amazing. The dynamic range of our eyes is so much greater than any camera that's out there, we're, we're not even close. Um, our eye is able to look at a scene like what I have here today, where I'm standing in shade and everything else around me is extremely bright and lit by the sun, but your eye is able to adjust and not only see the details and everything that's in shadow, but also see the bright sky, the clouds, and everything all simultaneously. Cameras are not that good, but they're trying and they're getting better and better. So basically what happens is the dynamic range of a camera is how much it can see on the bright end and how much it can see on the darker end at the same time. So you're able to retain all of that information and you can shoot better in situations like the one I'm in right now where I'm exposed for myself in the dark, in the shade underneath these trees, but everything else is very bright and in the sun. So what happens here is I have three cameras set up. I have the 5D Mark III with the CineStyle uh, preset installed and using that right now. CineStyle is a preset that expands the dynamic range of the 5D a bit and allows you to uh, retain some of, the, some of the highlights and some of the shadows a little bit more. In the middle I have uh, my XF300 from Canon. Um, it's an ENG style camera and it doesn't have the greatest dynamic range. Uh, it's still a great camera. I love it. And then over here I have uh, the brand new Sony FS7. FS7 I believe is rated for 14 stops of dynamic range. And right now I'm shooting in their Cine L mode, which is their cinema mode, uh, with S-Log3, which is a log gamut which gives the camera the widest dynamic range um, possible. So I should hopefully be utilizing all of those 14 stops that it can capture. Now, if you take a look at uh, the 5D cine style image and at the FS7 S-Log image, they probably look pretty flat. Uh, they look kind of washed out, desaturated. Well, the reason for that is that in order to achieve that dynamic range, a lot of these cameras shoot in a sort of washed out log format. Now, while this may not look so great immediately out of the camera, the idea is that you're capturing as much detail as possible in your highlights and in your shadows while you're on site shooting and then you can go into post and you can tweak and color grade the image and all of those details will pop out so if you want to if you want to grade more towards the brighter side you have those details if you want to grade a little bit darker you have those details and if you want to go somewhere in the middle you're still going to have a really nice looking image now as you can see these three cameras look extremely different right now uh, the 5d here is doing a decent job with the cine style um, preset installed. It has a decent dynamic range. Um, it's got, you know, it's got me. I'm exposed for me here in the shade. It's doing an okay job with the bright sunlight behind me. We're going to be losing some of that bright, bright sky. And the problem is that information is completely gone. It's clipping in the camera. We can never, ever bring it back. Here in the middle, we have the XF300, which doesn't have any sort of log presets or anything like that, and it's having a really, really hard time. I may be exposed properly, but you can see directly behind me, even the grass is just completely clipped and blown out. There's no detail, no information there, which means when I go into post, I can't bring that back. There's nothing I can do. Um, so the dynamic range on this camera is not so great, and you really wanna work in a situation where everything is all dark or all light. Uh, so you don't get a whole lot of range. 
Now the FS7 with the S-Log and its 14 stops is doing a much better job. Not only am I exposed here, but we're gonna retain a lot more detail in the background behind me. So when I go into post with this S-Log image, I'm gonna be able to get the detail back. Now I may still have some highlights popping in the sky because this is a really grueling test on these cameras here, but the FS7 is gonna retain the most information out of this shot, and I'm gonna have the best chance of recovering those details and making them pop out when I grade in post. So basically that's what dynamic range is and how you're going to utilize it. So this may be important to you if you're looking to shoot more cinematic stuff, if you're looking to shoot for you know films and you really wanna be able to have details in the shadows as well as details in the highlights and you plan on doing a lot of color and post grading work, um, dynamic range is gonna be big for you. However, if you're someone who's shooting just YouTube videos or ENG stuff or interviews, you know, the dynamic range may not be as big of a deal for you. Um, like I said, the Canon XF300 here in the middle is a fantastic ENG style camera. I've had it for years and it's great. It's great for interviews. It's great for documentary style stuff. It's great for all of that. You just have to give it the light that it needs and it does a fantastic job. And the images coming out of it look great without the need to go and grade. So it all depends on what you're looking for in your camera. So if you're shooting with a DSLR, you're gonna get a pretty decent dynamic range depending on your camera. And that Cine style preset installed really, really helps. If you're looking for more ENG interview style or YouTube video style, then something like the XF300 is gonna be fine for you, much lower dynamic range. And if you're really looking to go big, uh, something like the brand new FS7 here with its 14 stops of dynamic range, it can be used for ENG work, but it also can you know, hold its own on a film set environment. It's just a fantastic camera, but you are paying a premium for a camera that has that kind of sensitivity and dynamic range. So I hope that helped clarify what dynamic range is for you guys and what it is and whether it's important for you and why some cameras cost exponentially more than others uh, because of their dynamic range. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please uh, let me know down in the comments and of course, please subscribe. Thanks.